Welcome. This is going to be a quick video on Kirchhoff's rules for circuits. Um, it's actually going to just be on the first rule. There's two rules. There's um, the junction rule and then there's the loop rule. The junction rule is going to take care of um, currents and then the loop rule is all about voltages or potential differences. So um, we are just in this video we're just going to do the junction rule. Okay so um, First of all, before we, I tell you about the junction rule, let me tell you what a junction is, because Kirchhoff's uh, loop uh, junction rule is is referring to junctions. So before I give you the spiel on that, let me just show you what a junction is, what we mean by a junction. A junction is an intersection in a circuit. So it's any time um, a current can go one of two ways. So let's so the current would be flowing along here. We're going to go with the conventional flow of current. So it's going to flow from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal. So let's say current's flowing along here, gets to here, and then some goes this way and some go that way. Well, right there, that's called a junction. It's like an intersection. Um, if these were cars going down the road. And so um, there's only one other junction in this circuit then besides um, this one, and that is um, this one right here. See how um, there's an intersection where the current can can um, go and uh, it has to, has to split up. And so those are called junctions. So the junction rule just says this. The junction rule just says that um, for any junction, the sum of all the currents traveling into a junction must equal the sum of all the currents traveling out of a junction. Okay, so all the, all the currents going into a junction have to equal the currents coming out of a junction. That's due to the conservation of charge. So the junction rule has to do with the conservation of charge where the the loop rule the next one in the next video I'm going to do that loop rule is um, has to do with voltage and that will um, that's going to have to do with the conservation of energy okay so this is the conservation of charge and so um, let's take another look so this is kind of a wordy way of saying this it's using some English but this is a, a more mathematical way of saying this um, these sigmas mean the sum of, so the sum of all the currents into a junction have to equal the sum of all the currents out of a junction. Sometimes it's written um, like this. It's written like this. The sum of all the junctions, or excuse me, all the currents going into a junction um, have to add up to zero. That's another way of looking at it, um, but if you go with this route, then you have to count the currents going into a junction as positive and the currents coming out of the junction as negative, and then the algebraic sum will always add up to zero. This is just saying that the, the currents going in have to equal the currents coming out. That should seem reasonable to you. So um, let's go back to this circuit right here. And um, let's say um, we figure this out. Let's say um, I do a equivalent resistance of this circuit, and um, let's say that these combined give us about two gives us two ohms of resistance, and so there would be about three amps flowing through here. So there's three amps flowing through here, and then it comes down here. And if I told you that um, two amps go this way. then um, it would just make sense that there's got to be some current going this way. And so that would have to be um, 1 amp. See how the current going in, 3 amps, into that junction equals the sum of the currents coming out, 2 amps plus 1 amp? That's all that means. Okay, this 1 amp, when it goes through here, it's going to um, come down through here and we'll have a 1 amp going into this junction on this side and there'll be two amps going through on this side. And so now we know that coming out of this, if there's one amp going into that junction and two amps, another two amps going into that junction, that's a total of three. That means that there must be three amps here. 
And so that's the junction row. Um, just a couple other things uh, before I give you another example. Um, this has two junctions, but let's assume that we thought of this as being a junction here. That point being a junction. It's really not an intersection, but it, it's going to, um, I'd like to just make one point about it. And that is that if three amps are going in, then three amps must come out. In other words, like right here, there must be three amps. Like if I look at this junction right in the corner, there's three amps going in, there must be three amps coming out. That's, that's why I'm saying that, that if this is two amps, since there are no real junctions between uh, this point and over here, this still has to be two amps because there's no junctions for the current to split off. When this is one amp here, it stays one amp all the way till it has a chance to split off. See how that works? Hey, notice um, another thing just, just uh, um, that's just kind of interesting, and that is that the 6 ohm resistor is getting only 1 amp, whereas the 3 ohm resistor offers less resistance, half the resistance, and so it gets 2 amps. All right, and then moving right along, one more. So here we have another circuit. Um, you want to see if you can count how many junctions there are in this circuit? I'm going to tell you in a second, but see if you know how many junctions there are in this circuit. Okay, so um, I'm getting two junctions. This is a junction, and this is a junction. And let's say we have a battery. We don't know the uh, resist the, the voltage of the battery, but we do know there's five amps coming out. Okay, now this five amps, this has to be five amps here too then, because there's no junctions to split that up. Or if you want, you can call this a junction and say that the currents into that junction have to equal the currents out. Either way you look at it. So this also has to be 5 amps. And so does this. Okay, now if that's 5 amps and we get to this junction, and I'm just making these numbers up now, so um, you know, don't don't wonder like how did I know there was one amp through there? Only because I'm saying that there's one amp. So let's see, there's one amp in this one, and there's one amp in this one. Now I know how much current is flowing in this right here because the junction rule says if there's five amps going in, and two one goes this way, one goes that way, there must have been three amps coming out. Do you know how much current is going into that point right there? Three amps. There's three amps through there. There's three amps. There's one amp in here. This is one amp here. So coming out of here must be five amps. And five amps and five amps so current flows through a circuit current flows through a circuit and it just makes sense because of the conservation of charge think of this in terms of water if this were water what if there were um, what if I told you there was um, 500 gallons of water every minute that flows by this point right here it's flowing this way 500 gallons every minute and um, if I told you there was only one gallon passing this point per minute, one gallon point passing this point per minute, and let's say one gallon per minute passing that point, you'd be like, what's happening to all the water? And you should be because there's a conservation of water. And so, um, so that's the point, is that the, the total amount of charge, that you, that you, don't, you can't lose charge in a circuit. Okay? And current is how much charge goes by a particular point per second. It's how much, uh, it's coulombs per second of charge passing by. All right, um, so that's the, that's the junction rule. And uh, my next video will be the loop rule. All right, thanks.